Hey everybody, this is example number two from Mechanics of Materials covering axial loads. The problem statement that we have is the reinforced concrete column shown below consists of six A36 steel reinforcing rods. It experiences an axial force of 50 kips and we need to find the required diameter of each steel rod so that 75% of the load is carried by the steel and 25% of the load is carried by the concrete and the modulus of elasticity of the steel is equal to 29,000 KSI and uh, for concrete it's equal to 4200 KSI. So here's our uh, reinforced concrete column. It has a diameter of 10 inches, has an axial compressive force applied to the rigid cap on top equal to 50 kips as a height of 4 feet and we need to find uh, the diameter of the steel rod so that 75 percent of the load is taken by the steel and 25 percent is taken by the concrete. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the load uh, on, on, each steel rod, on each steel rod and the load on the concrete. So the load on each steel rod is equal to the percentage, the proportion of load that's taken by the steel, which is 75%, so 0.75, times the axial load of 50 kips, divided by the number of steel rods, uh, 6. And we'll, the number of steel rods, is, we call it N. And so the load on each steel rod that's taken by each steel rod is equal to, I made a spreadsheet for this example, so it's uh, 6.25 kips. 6.25 kips. Six. And you guys can get access to this spreadsheet as well as many other spreadsheets at our website at engineeringexamples.net. Next, we're going to calculate the load that's taken by the concrete. So it's the proportion of the load taken by the concrete, which is 25%, so 0.25 times 50 kips. And that's equal to 12.5 kips. 12.5 kips. Next, we're going to use, a, we're going to use compatibility and compatibility means we're trying to derive some type of displacement boundary condition. So if we take a look at the reinforced concrete column, we see that the 50 kip load is applied to the rigid cap on top, and that means that the displacement of each steel rod will be equal, will equal the displacement of the concrete. So here, here's what we have, the displacement of this each steel rod is equal to the displacement of the concrete and using the load displacement relationships we would express the displacement of the steel and the concrete here so here is uh, the displacement of the steel and here is the displacement of the concrete so the displacement of the steel is equal to the load uh, taken by each steel rod times the length of the rod divided by the cross-sectional area of each rod times the modulus of elasticity of steel equals the load taken by the concrete times the length of the concrete column divided by the cross-sectional area of the concrete times the modulus of elasticity of the concrete. And because the length of the steel rod is equal to the length of the column, we, the, L, the length terms can cancel out. So we're left with this over here, this expression. And we rearrange this equation, uh, this expression, so that on the left-hand side, we have the ratio of the cross-sectional areas of each steel rod and the concrete. And then on the right-hand side, we have this. So all we've done is just rearrange this expression and gotten the areas on the left-hand side. Now we're going to actually plug in the terms for the area on the left-hand side. So the area of each, uh, so here, so on top we had the area of the each steel rod and then on the on bottom, on the bottom, on this uh, denominator, we had the area of the concrete. So the area of each steel rod is equal to pi times ds squared over 4, and d sub s is the diameter of each steel rod. And then the area of the concrete is equal to the area of the column, so pi times dc squared over 4, minus n, which is the number of steel rods, times the area of each steel rod, so pi times ds squared over 4. And then the right-hand side of the expression, it, it remains the same. And if we look at this, we can cancel out the pi over 4 terms, pi over 4. 
And here we're left with this over here. Just so we just simplified it even more. And we need to solve for this d sub s ds. So uh, to solve for ds, it's, it's just going to require some algebraic manipulation. And there's going to be some steps involved. Uh, I'm not going to show all the steps, and, but if you guys can go through the steps if you like just to confirm. But what you'll find is that the diameter that's required for each steel rod is equal to this. It's the square root of the load taken by each steel rod times the modulus of elasticity of the concrete times the diameter of the column squared divided by the load taken by the concrete times the modulus of elasticity of steel plus the number of steel rods plus the load taken by each steel rod uh, the, the number, of, uh, number of steel rods times the load taken by each steel rod times the modulus of elasticity of concrete and so this comes out to be uh, 2.247, so about 2.25 inches. 2.25 inches. And this is the end of this example. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. And please also check out our website at engineeringexamples.net where you can get access to all the spreadsheets for uh, this example as well as many other examples. See you guys in the next video. Thanks.